everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, I'm gonna look more closely into the idea of resolution bottlenecking. Now, I already made a video on this a few weeks ago, but I just wanted to expand the benchmark and see if I could find some example of this idea that certain resolutions can bottleneck high-end video cards. So as always, I'm testing this out on my AMD FX6350 overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz, paired with my Gigabyte GTX 1070 with its factory overclock. Right off the bat, resolution can't bottleneck a system. Bottlenecks occur in hardware when one part of a system can't perform to its maximum potential because another part is holding it back. The most common happen between either the CPU or GPU, and totally depend on the game or application. The theory I found myself seeing around the internet and in my comment section is that benchmarking something like a 1070 at lower resolutions will bottleneck it meaning that even on a low-end CPU, the frame rate would be better at higher resolutions since the GPU wouldn't be bored. GPUs don't get bored. The hierarchy of a computer makes the CPU an easy choke point. The CPU feeds data to the GPU, so a high-end GPU isn't bored, it's simply doing everything the CPU can throw at it. If the CPU asked for a higher resolution, then the GPU would have more to process. So why would increasing resolution increase performance? Well, it wouldn't. This concept makes no sense at all, and in only rare occurrences will actually happen. In only a single test I've ever done did a higher resolution perform better than a lower one, and at a 4% gain, it was probably within the margin of error. So to show this, I tested several games at 720p, 900p, 1080p, and 1440p. Sadly, I don't have easy access to a 4K screen, but 1440p should illustrate this just fine. First off, in Fallout 4, the CPU bottleneck is apparent right away. 720p and 1440p perform within 3% of each other. So while we don't gain any performance, we do lose a slight amount. This probably comes from the added stress on the GPU, but even at 1440p, it seems the CPU is capping out at somewhere under 80 FPS on average. What this shows off is the idea of a CPU frame time. Just like the GPU, a CPU must create and feed frames to be processed. The CPU handles input, physics, game logic, calculates the geometry of a scene, and so on. So while the GTX 1070 could be producing frame rates in the 90s, the CPU's limitations hold it back into the 70s. This is the definition of a CPU bottleneck. Looking further at The Witcher 3 and Bioshock Infinite, we have very similar results. The frame rate lowers progressively as the resolution increases. The decrease in performance isn't large, but that's because of the bottleneck. If I could expand this benchmark to 4K, we would finally see large decreases in frame rates like the ones I showed on my 4K video. The 1070 is a great graphics card, but even it can't handle 4K at max settings. A game that has more interesting results is Tomb Raider. Here we see the CPU is capable of sending over 200 frames per second off to be rendered at 720p. Since Tomb Raider is very light on the CPU, the game is GPU bottlenecked even from one of its lowest resolutions. The GTX 1070 is doing as many frames as it can to keep up with the CPU, and we can see that in the large dips it takes when going from 1080p to 1440p, alongside the close to constant 100% GPU utilization. The same type of results happen on a game like The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. It's very reliant on post-processing effects like anti-aliasing and supersampling, making each increase in resolution decrease the performance significantly. Resolution obviously has an effect on how well a graphics card can perform. The GTX 1070 is designed to handle resolutions like 1440p, so it's no wonder that even on an old CPU, it can do pretty well. You may not get more frames by increasing your resolution, but you can certainly get a better picture quality and in some cases relieve micro stuttering that occurs when the GPU is bottlenecked. For a game like Fallout 4, there's no reason not to run a game at higher resolutions since it's so CPU bound. However, on the flip side, it's probably best to lower the settings on The Vanishing of Ethan Carter if you want a decent frame rate. Each game has different bottlenecks, be it CPU, GPU, RAM speed, or whatever. But the point here is that resolution isn't a bottleneck itself, but its effect on a GPU can certainly exaggerate one. In almost no case will you gain performance at a higher resolution and the same settings. I'm not sure how this theory came to be, I'd be curious to know, but I can't find any evidence for it. As I've already said, the only thing I can confirm is a noticeable reduction in jittery gameplay. For some reason, running titles at higher resolutions tended to make the games feel smoother when running without V-Sync. I'm not exactly sure why that is, and I don't see the jitter in the data, so maybe that's a topic for another video. I hope this video clears up any confusion on a resolution's effect on performance. However, if you know of any examples of low resolutions bottlenecking performance, let me know in the comments. 
I'm very curious to see this theory in action, but I just can't seem to find it, even on several games I didn't feature in the benchmarks. Okay, everybody, that was my video for this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section and hit that subscribe button wherever it is. If you want to see more videos like this one in the future, and coming up next week, I've got a video on Insurgency. I'm going to do a little review on that, I think. And then after that, I've got about three weeks of vacation coming up. So hopefully I'll be doing a lot of videos during that time. So I hope you stick around for those, and I'll see you then.